The dog ate my homework. No, uh, but it's my printer that was acting up. Uh, I had now like, like five, five uh, printing cues on my printer, and it, has, it hasn't printed it yet. So, so what I ended up is do a manual thing, you know, to write it down. Uh, so I ended up with just one page instead of five pages, right? So good. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> but it's good to be here. Uh, every time I stand, stand here, I, I, I always say it's, all, it's always a privilege to be able to, to share the word rightly divided to, among, you, among you, my brothers and sisters, and, and it's always true. Um, so we should, you should say prayer for... For Pastor John and Pastor uh, Alex Kurzes and, and Brother Dean Antonici as they continue to, uh, to share the word uh, in Sacramento area and their Bible conference there. Um, my uh, text for this uh, morning, I took it in Ephesians, I'm sorry, in, in Philippians. If you turn your Bible there in, in the book of Philippians. We know that uh, the book of Philippians, uh, the letter to the, Philippi, to, the, to the saints at Philippi, was written by Paul while he was where? In prison, right? Yes. Um, so in Philippians uh, chapter 3, verse 10, and it says, That I may know him and the power of his resurrection... And the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this, for this uh, wonderful opportunity and this beautiful day that you have provided for us to be able to uh, study your word again, rightly divided, uh, most specifically in the letter to the Philippians, chapter 3, verse 10, and, and that we may be, may be able to, uh, through the power of your Holy Spirit, be able to to understand these things and, and relate it to others, and even in our own lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, we all know that the book of Philippians was written by the Apostle Paul again. Um, maybe uh, relatively late in his ministry, at least it's past Acts 20. Um, <clears throat> but we all know who the Apostle Paul was before, right? He was the persecutor. He was the one that is actually the number one enemy of the Lord, of God, God's number one enemy at the time in human form, right? Um, so just, just to give you an idea of what Paul was, his, his frame of mind before he came, before he met the Lord Jesus Christ in the road to Damascus, let's go to Acts 26. Acts 26, and then we're going to go to, to, to Acts 9 later. Acts 26. Here he is in, just to give you the context, he, was, he, he is in front of, of, of King Agrippa at the time because he requested that he be um, um, requested for trial, right? And he was given the opportunity to address the crowd and... Um, I should start in 26.4. 26.4, it says, My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews. In other words, his life is not secret. He's probably one of the most public, uh, claimed to be a Pharisee of Pharisees, so he's public. His, his life is public knowledge, in other words. Which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. And now I stand and I'm judged for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers, unto which promise our 12 tribes. You see what he says, are? So he's identifying with them, right? Obviously, right? Because he was a Jew from the tribe of Benjamin, right? Our twelve tribes instantly serving God day and night, hoping hope to come, for which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. So he's being accused of what? For that hope, right? For 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 what? Yes. 
See, see, because the next verse says what? Why shouldn't be? See, this is a good, it's a good question, not only for King Agrippa, right? This is a good question for us. And it's a good question to use to somebody that we want to reach uh, them through God's word rightly divided. Look at this. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you? He's addressing King Agrippa here. That God should raise the dead. Isn't that a strange question? Right? Where, it tells you where Paul's hope lies. is in that resurrection of the dead. That he's going to be included there. Actually, that's one of his hope. To be included in the resurrection of the dead. When he says, I verily thought myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And he did, right? He did a lot of contrary things against the name of Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ. What are those contrary things? Oh, he just persecuted the Christians, killed whomever he can, he can you know, if he's faster or not, you know, with their steps, if they're, if they're slowing down because of exhaustion. Well, he just took over and, and, and hauled them into prison, hailed them into prison, right? And when the court or whoever, the, 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 the level of, of government authority that asked, shall we declare these people guilty? Paul gave his what? His assent, his approval. That's why he says, I, I was a persecutor, I was a blasphemer, I was a murderer, right? This was Paul's life pre-Acts 9. Right? Saul the persecutor, Saul the murderer, right? That because of his fervent desire to make or keep clean, so to speak, this religion, this Jews' religion, whom he profited the most, by the way, as he claimed to be, because of this, right? He's describing, he's describing these things before he met the Lord Jesus Christ. And look at that. Which thing I also did in Jerusalem. Many of the saints did I shut up in prison. Having received authority from the chief priest. And when they were put to death. I gave my voice against them. Them meaning those earthly kingdom saints. He approved the death penalty. This is the man that we call the Apostle Paul today, right? And I punish on 11, and I punish them off in every synagogue and compel them to blaspheme. You know that phrase, compel them to blaspheme? Force. Yeah. <laughs> Force what? You know, you know how, you know, in, in, our, in our modern times, we, you know, with the rendition and, and the waterboarding, you know, we're, we're trying to get uh, information from, from our, our captives. It's what you do. You compel them, right? You compel, compel them to confess, right? Sometimes they confess the truth. Sometimes they confess the lie and all that, right? But what, that's what they did. He compelled them to blaspheme. Blaspheme who? God, right? And being exceedingly mad against them. I mean, I guess the, the King James Version is kind of limited in, in the way he, it describes things sometimes. So he puts that in, in very... Uh, and being exceedingly mad. I don't know what, what one word could uh, match that, right? Exceedingly mad. <clears throat> Against them, I, persecute, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Meaning outside of Judea and Samaria, obviously, right? Whereas I went to Damascus, now he, here he starts that part where his life was turned upside down. Whereupon I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest. Oh, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, 
Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. You know that phrase, it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks? That's not the modern language pricks that we, we used to relate to, right? Not that one. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. It's basically, it is hard for you, Saul, to fight against the truth. On some modern translation, they call it goads. You know what a goad is? Goad is one that, if you're, if you're living a Western cowboy life, they, they put these goads on their boots, right? To, not, to uh, nudge their cattle, or I mean the horse when they're riding, to move, right? Because it hurts. That goad is a spike, right? It's a pointed thing. There's no way. You, you, if you kick against a pointed thing, what's going to happen? It's going to, you're going to get hurt, right? It's, it's because it's pointed, right? It's, it's, it's the truth. That's what truth is. You have, the, you, have, you have the liberty to not believe it, ignore it, you know, pretend that it's not there. But the truth is truth. Just like if somebody says, who is God? I don't believe in God. Well, you know, just by, it's, you know, like if you, if you mention that you don't believe in God, then God will probably say, you're hoping that God will say, Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I offended you and all that. No. no, right? God is God, whether you believe him or not. Truth is truth, whether you believe it or not. Right? So it is hard for thee to kick against the prick. And I said, who thou art, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus. I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. And that's, and that's pretty much the theme of our message today and for Dan. The title is Knowing Christ and the Power of His Resurrection. When Jesus says, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest, I would like to think that it, it bored into Paul's mind in his thinking when, Jesus, when the Lord Jesus Christ says, I am Jesus whom Thou persecutest. Because from that point on, which we know post Acts 9, beginning in Acts 9, that it became the single most important information that he has ever heard. And he dedicated his life in finding who Jesus is and who Jesus was. The story of his life is pretty much an open book for all of us now, right? Thirteen epistles. In Acts 9, in Act, go, go to Acts 9, which is pretty much, you see in the book of Acts, we all, John, John is not uh, negligent in, in, in reminding us, right, that it's there three times, three times that the, the, uh, the apostle Paul has repeated the event in Acts 9. Well, Repeated twice, right? So it, it's three times that it was related, right? The conversion of, of Paul, the conversion of Saul to Paul occurred three times. And you guys know Acts 9, 22, and the one we just read, right? 26. So in Acts 9, you see this the same. <clears throat> Acts 26 is actually the most Detailed, if I can say that, most detailed um, uh, explanation that Paul did, in, or the most descriptive, too, uh, in his conversion. Because in Acts 9, it simply says, um, For, and he fell to the earth, and heard a voice unto him, saying, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembled and astonished and said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? You see, you see that instant recognition of, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? Right? And this guy is a guy in authority. This guy is the guy who's used to giving orders and, and commands. And his question is, and Lord, what will you have me to do? Right? By the way, you know, Paul probably thought later, I shouldn't have that, ask that question, 
right? <laughs> Judging from all the experiences that he had to go through, right? Um, and from then on, he, he soldiered on, right? But things are, are not really, obviously, it's not smooth for him, right? When I say smooth, I mean, I'm, I'm under, severely understating that, right? Um, he had rough, he had rough experiences. <clears throat> In Galatians, uh, people are, are questioning his apostleship. Where do you come from telling me of that? You know, telling us that. You're not even part of the twelve, you know all that, right? Uh, so in Galatians, if you if you uh, go to Galatians, oh my God, the time is so quick. Galatians um, eleven, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached to me is not what after man, right? For I neither received it of man. Not it was I taught it, but by the what? The revelation of Jesus Christ. He did not search any books. He did not uh, search any information outside of, of God's word and, and, and come up with an answer. Oh, now I found the answer. All right? Not that. Right? It's all through the revelation by the Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul's hardships... He went through all those experiences, and we're going to go through those verses, right? But in the end, in, in, if you go to 2 Timothy, here's his, here's his attitude right here. 2 Timothy, the last book that he wrote. Chapter 4, verse 6, it says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the fight, I have kept, I, I'm sorry, I have fought the fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid out for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Folks, that, that is the prize. That is the goal. The crown of righteousness. And we are part of that. When he says, and not to me only, but to all them that also that love. He's appearing. Do you love his appearing? I can't wait. You know, that's why we have this, this phrase, maybe today, Lord. I'm, day in, day out, I'm, 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 in my mind, I always say that maybe today, Lord. You know, I, I, who cares about what happens after that, right? We don't care, right? We are so we are so concerned. We are so deep into, of course, our our, our personal lives, right? Our workplace, our our, our school lives, um, you know, our family life and stuff like that. It's, it's good to think of them because you have to take care of your family and all that. I I, I understand that. But in the end, what matters is what happens on that day. Maybe today, Lord. That's the blessed hope. You should be waiting for that. You should not be dreading that. Because there's no reason for you to dread that if you trusted and believed in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Regardless of the greatness of your plans in the future, by the way. You know, we have so many plans that we want to do in the future. Right? But don't be brokenhearted when the Lord Jesus Christ comes into the clouds to meet us in the air and then break up your plan. Because it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter that. By then, it doesn't matter, right? Don't be so brokenhearted. Right? So, what did Paul mean when he says, go back to uh, Philippians 3:10, that I may know him. First it says, and the power of his resurrection. And then the second is the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. Did you notice anything on that verse? Any, anybody? You notice that it's not chrono, chronologically correct. Right? It should have been, 
Should have been suffering and then death and then resurrection, right? Well, he said, power, that I may know him, the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformable, being made conformable unto his death. It's not, it may not be chronologically arranged in the correct way. But for the Apostle Paul, remember what we read in Acts 26, 8? Why should it be a strange thing to you that the dead should rise, I mean, from rise from the dead, right? Talking about resurrection to King Agrippa. That was foremost in Paul's mind. Maybe that's, that's why it came up first, the power of his resurrection. Obviously, the suffering and the death are all important events in his life, as far as the Lord Jesus Christ is concerned, that it affected his life deeply, personally, right? When it, when it comes to that, that resurrection comes first. The power of his resurrection. After all, isn't it the same apostle that says that Christ is our life? Christ is our life. Right? And that we are complete in Christ. Right? Christ is our life. That's in Colossians 3, 4. If some guys are wondering, Christ is our life. And also, if you go to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. We just got done, in San Diego, we just got done with uh, about four, five weeks, five weeks ago, we just got done with five Corinthians, uh, First Corinthians, and we learned that chapter 15 is the longest, <laughs> the longest chapter in Paul's epistles, right? Chapter 15, so move, go, go there in 17, 15, 17, it says, <clears throat> And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Is that right? Yeah. All right. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. Those who died, meaning those who died in Christ, right, are perished. If Christ did not rise from the dead. You remember that. If Christ did not rise from the dead, if you die in Christ, that's, it doesn't mean anything. If Christ did not rise from the dead. <clears throat> 19, if in this life only, this life only right here on this planet Earth, we have hope in Christ, he says, we are of all men most miserable. Those are attention getter. I mean, if you read those verses and what do you mean? If I'm, if I'm living in Christ in this life, I'm miserable? Yes, if in this life only. And you're not talking about this. Right here. Right? If this is not involved, this blessed hope, our gathering together, which we call the rapture, if that is not happening, it's useless. We just might as well pack our bag and go home. I mean, you know, we can still maybe fellowship because we like each other and all that, but <laughs> not more. Not more. Right? <clears throat> 20, but now in Christ, see, it's the beauty of the, that phrase, but now, right? Just like that, but now. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept. He was the firstborn from the dead. For since by man came death, by man came also the what? The resurrection, the resurrection of the dead. And that's what hope, I mean, that's what Paul, Paul is hoping for. Right? The power of his resurrection, he says. 22, for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Oh, that's a wonderful truth. Amen. See, in, the, in this, I'll, I'll give you I'll the, thing, the things that happened because Christ died and rose again. Right? Go to Romans. Go to Romans chapter 6. And you'll probably say, we've just been there this morning. I mean, it's with, with, with rich uh, message. And, you know, every time we talk about 
uh, doing our message when and John is not here and we're the ones going to speak. It's, it's really useless for us to tell, you know, okay, okay, I'm preaching on this. Because what, regardless of what happens, we're going to cross and all that, you know. Because, I don't know, it's strange as it may, may be. But 6.9 of Romans, look, 6.9 of Romans. It says, knowing that Christ is being raised from the dead, diet no more. Death hath no more what? Dominion over him. Hath no more dominion over him. He only died once. Ten. For in that he died, he died unto sin what? Once. It'll never happen again. Right? But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. And guess what? We are part of that. Because he conquered death, we are. We, we actually, you know, some of us probably here will die, you know. I mean, even if, despite of our hope for, for that day, right? Some of, us, some of us here will get sick and die and pass away and stuff like that. Some of us will, you know, maybe 50 years from now. 50, 100 years from now, if the Lord tarries, none of, us, none of us here will be here, right? 100 years? Although I told my wife, I, pl I plan to live 140 years, you know. And, <laughs> and then he, her reply was, uh, you know, you're going you're gonna to smell like the ground. <laughs> you know, you're going to live by yourself and all that. Right? <laughs> so. Anyway, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, None of, none, of, none of us will be here, right, in a hundred years. But regardless of what happens, death has already been conquered, right? When Paul says, I will magnify the Lord, whether it be by life or by death. You see? To, to Paul, it doesn't, it, doesn't make a, it doesn't make a difference whether he lives or die anyway. You know? That's the beauty of being in Christ, in Christ, right? So here, we died no more, right? He died no more. And then 1 Corinthians, again, go back to 1 Corinthians 15 again. 15, quickly, rather quickly. Uh, 15, uh, let's say, um, 20, 15, 20. It says, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. 23. But, in, but every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. You see that? Right? You know, that's, that's not just an opinion of the speaker, whoever stands here and says, we, we, we have eternal life, we, just, we, we conquered death with Christ. That's not an opinion. Paul said that there, right? <clears throat> Afterwards, they, the Christ that are, it is coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall deliver up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. That's 24, right? For him is strain till he hath put all enemies under his feet. That verse right there is prophesied. You notice that? 25. For he must reign till he had put all enemies under his feet. That's prophesied event right there. I'm not talking about the entire chapter. I'm, I'm just talking about that verse. Psalm 110 will tell you that, right? <clears throat> so that is conquered in Romans 6, 9 and, and 1 Corinthians 15. And what else is conquered? Sin is conquered. Romans 6. Again, Romans 6. We don't stray too far from Romans 6. Didn't you notice? <clears throat> 6, 5 of Romans. For we have been planted together in all likeness, in the likeness of his death. I'm sorry. We shall be also in the what? In the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this. That our old man is crucified with him. When do you think? What verse do you think when, when, you, when you read that? What other verse? That's crucified with him? Galatians what? Galatians 2.20, right? And the body of sin, see look at that. 
crucified with him, that the body of sin might be what? Destroyed. Sin is destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. Should not. Right? Paul says, let me qualify that by saying, should not serve sin. What does it mean, should not serve sin? You have, you have the power. You can make the decision for yourself not to be again under dominion of sin, right? We have that. We can make that decision as saints of the Most High God. We can make that decision. <clears throat> Seven, for he that is dead is freed from where? From sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we heard that phrase so many times, dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Again, the resurrection. Knowing that Christ being what? Raised from the dead, dieth no more. I read that a while ago. And then let, let, me, let me skip that and then and go, and go to 11. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Reckon, you know, Paul, it's a joke. Paul is, is a sodomer, right? Reckon yourself. Also yourselves to be. But reckoning is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is an accounting word. Reckon. Right? See yourself there. Or, okay, that's a fact right there. That's a fact, Jack. You're right there in Christ. Reckon ye, he says. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. That's not the power of imagination, by the way. You're not imagining things when you are reckoning yourselves to be in Christ, right? Dead and dead unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin, therefore, you see that? Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body. You have the control. You have the power not to allow sin to take control of your life. That ye should obey it, in the lusts thereof. Because we are constantly exposed to sin. If you notice. I didn't have to tell you that, right? We are constantly, you know, there's a barrage of all this, you know, from the media, from everything, you know, from the people that we deal with and stuff like that, you know. But we have the control, right? We cannot, we cannot obey, obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield you, you see again, we, we, have, we, can, we can yield, but we don't have to, right? Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as what? Instruments, tools of righteousness unto God. For sin, that's a beautiful verse right here. 614, for sin shall not have dominion over you. Why? For ye are not under the law, but under grace. Oh, that's so wonderful. You don't have to obey it, right? You, you're, you, you're not under the dominion of sin because you're not under the law. Now, if you put yourself back under the law like what the Galatians did, then you're putting yourself back into, under the bondage of sin. But you have the choice. Again, you have the choice. You don't have to yield to it. You don't have to obey it. You don't have to be under its power and dominion. Next one. Who else is conquered? Notice I said who. Right? Go to Hebrews 2. Hebrews 2. Verse 14, and it says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might, what? Destroy him. Who is him there? Satan, right? That had the power of death, that is the devil. Because of Christ's death and that he rose again. 
again. Death is conquered. Sin is conquered. And here, Satan is destroyed. Satan is conquered. Now, so how, how can we experience this thing? And I'm, 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 I'm one who is kind of leery when, it, when you're talking about experience. You know, just because people are, are going by experience instead of going to the word of God. You know, for most of the time. But as far as living the life of walking under grace, which is basically experiencing it under grace, right? There are things... I'm not going to go through the Romans 7 because Rich has already spoken about that. You know, Romans 7 is what? Flesh over what? The spirit. That's basically what it is, right? There's this believing guy, believing man, who after believing uh, allowed him, allowed himself, his life to be, to, to, I mean, he, first of all, he worked under the power of his own flesh, the energy of his own flesh. That's what Paul was writing about in Romans 7. Right? But like, like Rich says, there's an answer to that. The answer to that was actually the chapter before that, which is Romans 6. And then the chapter after that, which is Romans 8. So if you turn yourself, to turn your Bible to Romans 8, this is how we experience that. Romans 8, verse 8, the verse, I'm sorry, verse 9. Right? 8 verse 9 it says, But ye are not in the flesh, Romans 7, right? but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you, dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead, resurrection, Dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also what? Quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. You see that? That's the earnest, right? Now go to Ephesians 1, another one, another verse. Because in, in, in the Bible, you know, uh, scriptures explains the scriptures. Ephesians 1. I could write, I could read the whole thing to you, but we don't have enough time. Ephesians 1, verse 19. Look what it says. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, Ward? Who what? Believe. believe. See, that's a requirement, to believe. Right? Is that a work, by the way? Not a work, right? Believing is not a work. It's a choice. It's a choice. You know, Romans 4, 4, 4, 5 will tell you that. It's not a work, right? <clears throat> Which he wrote in Christ, I'm sorry, uh, on what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who are to believe according to the working of his mighty power. Which he wrought in Christ when he what? When he raised him from the dead. You see, you see Paul's, Paul's thinking is always on the raising of the Lord Jesus Christ. The resurrection from the dead. Right? And set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. 21. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is what? To come. Those things, you know, principality, power, and might, and dominion, and every name that is named, those are already existing in the heavenly places. It's just waiting, it's just waiting for us. That's what Paul is saying here. Not only in this world, but it, in that which is what? To come. Right here. You're not going to be, you know, we always say in our Bible study, if you're a saint, if you claim yourself to be a believer and a saint of the Most High God, when you get there, you're not going to be jobless. You, don't, you won't have any problem with unemployment <laughs> when you go there. You know, there's a brother here, I think, uh, Big John, if you know him, Big John. 
He said, I don't care. When I get to heaven, I don't care if I clean the streets or, or, or work on the toilet there. I, I don't mind as long as I'm there, he says. <laughs> yeah, right? But we're going to have work. I mean, we're going to work there, right? And part of the work, right? Well, I, I don't really consider it, consider it. We're going to be studying the Bible there, right? God's word is eternal. You better believe it. It does not end here in this life, right? You're not going to be singing just hallelujah and sing kumbaya there. You know, it's going to be boring if, you, if, that's, if that's all we're going to do there is that. Can you imagine that? Right? It's going to be a boring place if that's all we're going to do there. No. God will reveal there the riches of his grace and his glory. Why? Because he is what? The father of glory. He has a plan called glory. Right? These three, this, this Godhead, right? The God, the God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They're going to they're gonna be contesting among each other who's going, to, who's going to give more glory to the other, right? And we're not talking 10,000 years, by the way, right? Amazing grace, you know, when we've been there 10,000 years. You know, sometimes when I sing that, I just sing that because it's, it's right there, but I hope I can find a better lyrics than that. Because it's not just 10,000 years. We're going to be there from ages upon ages upon ages. How long is an age? I don't know. But we're going to be there. Ages upon ages. Right? Colossians 2, 9. Another one. Colossians 2. Verse 9, for in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are, again, complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. So look at that. Ye are complete in him. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The him there is the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? And in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead, the Father, God the Father and the God the Holy Spirit, in him bodily. That's why when you're in Christ, as 10 says, and ye, us, are complete in him. John asked the question, if you are complete in Christ, what, what more can you do? To be more complete. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Don't even try. You're complete in Christ. And that's not one man's opinion. That's the opinion of God. God the Holy Spirit. You are complete. If you're in Christ, you are complete in Him. Right? Quickly, Ephesians again. 3.20. 3.20 of Ephesians. Now unto him that is able to exceedingly abundantly, again, that word, that's King James. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly. It's not just abundantly, by the way, right? It's exceeding abundantly above. Can you imagine those superlative words? <laughs> exceedingly abundant above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. That is the power of his resurrection. Second is the fellowship of his sufferings. The fellowship of his sufferings. We are now in San Diego, we are studying 2 Corinthians, right? Guess what is unique about 2 Corinthians? 2 Corinthians, here Paul details what transpired, what happened to him before he wrote 2 Corinthians. All the sufferings and the hardships. If you read 2 Corinthians, I don't know, if, if, if maybe some of you are at 
Back in 2016, December 2016, we held a Christmas uh, Bible study at Joe and Sue's uh, Prasinski's house. And, and John, at the, at, at the end of his message, he, he asked us and, and, and the question of, uh, what brought you to the, to the message of grace and stuff like that? You know, how, how do you get converted and all that? You know, the funny thing that came out of that, I noticed that most of the verses that the saints used and based their, their conversion from is 2 Corinthians. The testing and the trial and all that, right? Let's go there, right? Go to 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians. First go to chapter 4. Look at this. Chapter 4, verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. By the way, this vessel is earthen. Right here. Right? That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Look at what Paul says. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about. In the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. And then if you jump on 16, for which cause, all these things that he said, that he enumerated, for which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, this right here, skin and bones, perish, yet the inward man, is renewed day by day. There's nothing wrong spending your time in the gym, right? To bolster your your muscles or whatever, you know, to tone down your tone, tone down your muscles and stuff like that. That's good, right? But you better not neglect the inward man. That you feed it. And how do you feed that? Of course, with God's word. Because the inward man is what is being renewed day by day. Not week, after, not week by week. Day, on a daily basis that we spend our time in this world. Your inward man gets renewed. Even though we feel the aches and pains. I'm 62 now. I, I, when I was a teenager, what are you talking about getting sick? What is that, you know? And there, we have some young, young people here, they probably won't relate to that. You know, the pains and the aches and the bone, ligaments and tendons and stuff like that that used to be flexible and now it's not, right? You will realize that when we come to the, to the later part of our life, our early life, that we, we become more aware that of our limitations not only in the way we do things and our capability that we used to do, you know, before we used to jump this high, now it's about maybe knee, knee high, right? The shortest man in the Bible, knee high mind. Right? Uh, so, yeah, the inward man is what's being renewed day by day. And, 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 and look at the, another one is, is in... Um, if I may say so, um, in 2 Timothy 3.2, I'm, so, I'm sorry, 3.12, 3, 3.12, 2 Timothy, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall what? Suffer persecution. Suffer persecution. You are now forewarned. <laughs> if, you, if, you're going to, if, you, if you decide to trust it in the shed blood of Christ, persecution will happen. In whatever form, sufferings, you know, uh, people, your friends will, will avoid you. Well, you know, you can probably do the same thing by selling insurance, right? Your, 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 your friends will avoid you. 
But seriously, it's if you're if you're a child of God, if, if you if you see yourself as a saint of the most high God, prepare yourself for that. Because it's the truth. It says there, if you live godly, you will suffer persecution. Again, in the same book, chapter 1, verse 7 and 8 says, For God, why, why did Paul say this to Timothy? Because Timothy was at the time, at the point of his life in this, in this, sin, in this instance, Paul was in prison, he's in jail, uh, he's, 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 both his legs are in shackles and stuff like that, right? And yet he is writing to Timothy, telling him this, Watch, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be not now, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of, his, nor of me, Paul says, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the what? The afflictions, the sufferings, the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. We are all partakers of the afflictions of the gospel. We want to suffer for that. If you speak the truth, you don't have to look far. You speak the truth. Somebody will question you. And there's nothing wrong with questioning, by the way. But you will be persecuted for that in some quarters. Right? And again, in, in um, to suffer for Christ, really, what, boil, what it boils down to is to suffer for Christ. He's, Paul sees that the fellowship, can you imagine that statement, the, the, the phrase, the fellowship of his suffering? He didn't say the fellowship of his joy. No, it would have been more appropriate by saying the fellowship. You know, we'd like to be happy, joyous, and stuff like that, right? But he's talking about the fellowship of his suffering. He wants to share in that. That's why he tells Timothy, be not therefore afraid to be partaker, a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel. Right? But there is, let me, let me put a caveat on that word suffer, right? Go, go to 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11. And I will end this here. 2 Corinthians 11. I would say that this is the wrong way to suffer. Right here. I start with 17. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting. Seeing that many glory after the flesh, again, Romans 7, right? I will glory also, Paul says, for ye, what? Suffer, suffer fools gladly. That's the wrong way to suffer, by the way. Don't suffer fools gladly. For ye suffer fools gladly, why? Seeing ye yourselves are wise. 20. For ye suffer, if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face, I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak. How be it when it were in so ever any is bold, I speak foolishly, I am bold also. And then, he boasted about his fleshly thing, right, the Hebrew and all that. But what he's saying here is, to the Corinthians, who had the 10,000 instructors in Christ, right, 1 Corinthians 4.15, no. Paul says, I gave birth to you spiritually. I am your spiritual father. Right? And I'm the only one. Right? So when he says this, ye suffer if a man, ye suffer, by the way, ye suffer fools gladly. And then he says, for ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage. If a man devour you. If a man take of you. When I describe these things, what do you see in your mind? What is that? What is that? False teachers, yes. But the greater part, uh, the big picture, what is that? Legalism. Legalism? Bigger than that. A lack of 
religion. Religion. That's what will religion do to you. It will what? It will bring you into bondage. It will devour you. It will take of you. And it will exalt himself and smite you on the face. That's what religion will do to you. And that's what I, that's, that's 180 degrees apart, apart from the liberty that we have in Christ. Galatians 5. So I didn't have the time to, uh, to do the conformable to until his death. Maybe next time. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to, again, uh, study your word and, and think about the things that the Apostle Paul has enumerated in his desire and his life's goal to see the power of your, of your resurrection and the fellowship of your suffering and then being made conformable unto your death, O oh God. We just pray that... Uh, we get these words uh, straight in our hearts and, and that our inward man will continue to be nourished by your word. And we pray that uh, that through this body, this, this church, the body of Christ here in San Juan Capistrano, Lord, that uh, uh, we may uh, continue to be encouraged in, in studying your word rightly divided and, and enjoy the fellowship among each other, even if it's in the middle of suffering and afflictions, because we are doing this to put in the furtherance of your gospel, the gospel of the grace of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please all stand. Um,